Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 at webdesignandtechtips.com. Well, we got a cool one for you today. We've got these six images here. When I hover over any of them, we've got a little call to action. Going to fade in just like that and they can read it, click the button. We've got different amounts of information in these, as you can see. Now I've made this responsive, so these are going to work on tablet and mobile. If I hit my F12 key, I'm using Google Chrome with the great inspector tools here. If I hit my little responsive toggle there, it should take us to an iPad view, yet yeah, iPad Air. Let's make it a little bit bigger so you can see. There are images. We've got a little sentence turn up that says tap on the image for more information because on an iPad or iPhone, they're not going to know to tap on it. And of course, hover effects won't work. So once you tap on it, you've got information turn up. You can change the amount of padding if you want your info further down. I like my button to be fairly central there. And if we click on the next one, it'll do the same thing, etc. And of course, it'll do exactly the same thing on the iPhone also. If we change it to iPhone 12, there are our images. We've got our little title at the top. Tap on the image for more info. We just tap on there. You know what's going to happen. And of course, they can read it. They can click on the call to action, etc really easy to do so let's get started there's no coding involved in this today at all we're just using the inbuilt features of the divi theme itself okay well let's enable the visual builder once enabled let's go down let's add a new section here little blue button to add a new section i'm going to make mine a regular section i'm going to throw three columns in mine obviously it's up to you make as few or as many as you wish I'm going to use a call to action for mine today, but you can use any module you want to do this. I'm just using the call to action because it's got a button. I'm going to shave off a little bit of that writing there. Obviously, you'd have some real text to put in there. I want a button. So in the link down below, you've got to put a link in before the button will show up. Once you put the link in, there it is, fantastic. And of course, you can link the whole module somewhere by putting a link in here. As we're going to be using this on tablet and mobile, I probably wouldn't use this link right here, purely because when they tap on it on mobile or tablet, it's going to take them to this link rather than reveal the image. So I'm just going to use the button link for this itself. Okay, I'm going to leave that right there for a moment. Let's just get rid of this section at the top here. Save on confusion. Okay, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to change the background and the button slightly. So it's still under content, background's always under content. Let's make it a dark color, perhaps. I'm actually going to click on the field. I'm going to use this little variegated slider over here, opacity. I'm going to drag it down a little bit. You won't see anything because it's kind of letting some of that white through. But when we put an image through, there's going to be a bit of a hint of it behind there. Now, it's fine if you want that. If you want the solid color when it fades in, just leave that all the way up. And let's go into our design, to our button. I'm going to keep this very simple. Use custom styles for the button. All I'm going to do is change that background color to a black. And again, I want to see a hint of that image through, so I'm going to take it down to about 50% opacity, maybe even a little bit more. Whatever works for you, obviously. Now to ensure that this is going to work with different amounts of text and keep the aspect ratio that we want for our images, I'm going to give it a fixed height. So still in the design tab, let's close up our button here. We'll go to sizing. And let's try, I think I used 350 on the ones above. So in height, let's write 350, 350. It'll put the pics in for you. That's about right. It's kind of portrait shape which will work for me. Obviously you make yours whatever shape you want. And we can adjust it for tablet and mobile. If we hover over, and this is common to all Divi modules, rows and sections. Once you hover the dark writing within one of these, you'll see some little icons appear. If there's a little mobile phone type icon. We can put in a different value for tablet. That actually works fine for me. And a different value for a phone. 
Now, as long as all your text is going to fit in there, you probably don't need to adjust these. Or you can adjust these, keep whatever shape it is you want. It's entirely up to you. So I'm going to leave mine just like that, but there's an option for you. Great. Well, let's flip back to desktop style now. I'm happy with that. We're going to save what we've got going on here. I'm going to go into the row itself, the green tab for the row, and we've got three columns in our row. I'm going to go into my first column that this call to action is sitting in. Down to background. I'm going to add an image and we've got color, gradient, image, video, background pattern or background mask. Third one's image. We'll throw an image in there. As you can see, it's got a hint of it right there. But initially, I just want to see the images themselves. I don't want to see any of this text or the button. Really easy to do. Like I said earlier, no coding involved. So I'm going to save my column settings, which will take us back to the row. While I'm in here, I'm going to put an image in both of these other columns as well, because we're going to do the same thing for those. So I'll do that while I'm in here. We'll save that back to the row and we'll do the last column. Also, you don't see anything in there because at the moment they've got no content. Great. Well, let's save this back to the row. We'll save the row settings. Now let's make the hover effect happen here. So I'm going back into the blur module itself, the dark tab. Once in the blur module, I'm going to go to my design here. I'm going to go down to filters. We roll down, we've got one called opacity there, which is the amount of it you can see. Well, I don't want to see it at all. I just want to see the background image. So I'm going to pull that opacity slider all the way back down to the left there to 0%. And we're left with our nice little image there. Of course, we want to bring it back when they hover over it so they've got something to click on and read. So again, same as with the responsive devices, if you roll over, if there's a little arrow there, there is, we can have a completely different state on the hover tab. And the hover tab obviously is when the mouse on it. So when the mouse is on it, I want to bring it all the way back so they can read it and they can click on it. Perfect. On desktop, not going to see anything. And of course, you can adjust the padding on these if you want to push that down a bit more, just add a bit more padding on the top. We do that in spacing. I'm going to leave mine just as it is. There's the padding. And of course, you can adjust those on tablet and mobile too if you want to position your text more central, lower or higher. Now, the only other thing that I want to happen here, we're all seeing the hover state here. Let's just flip it back to desktop state. Is the time that it takes to go from desktop when the mouse is not on it to hover state with Divi, by default, 300 milliseconds, which is pretty quick. That's about a third of a second just under. So I want to slow it down for a bit of drama. We can do that over in the advanced here. Down to transitions. There's the default 300 mils. I'm going to put it up to maybe three quarters of a second, 750 mils. Obviously adjust whatever works for you. Don't want any delay. I want it to start to happen as soon as their mouse hits it. And the transition speed curve, I tend to use my little hover effects like this, is ease in out. That way, when you take your mouse off, it eases back out. These are all actually pretty similar, but in certain situations, some, especially linear, are going to work better than others. But for my hover effects, that's my go-to guy right there. Great. Well, if we've done everything correctly, that should now work for us. Of course, you don't have to go through this every time you do one of these. Now you've got the first one, you can just clone it. And drag one of them across, doesn't matter which one, because they're both identical. Go in there, obviously you're going to have to change out the text. Just take some of this away. And you'll notice it stays the same height because we've given it a fixed height. And then we'll clone it one more time. We'll drag one over here. Go in there, obviously change out your text. Let's just add a little bit more to this one. So we've got different amounts of text in each one, which would be a real world scenario. And of course you probably, unless it's the same link you want to take them to, want to change out your button link there. Great, and now we've got one row. You can just duplicate the row and change out the images and keep on going for as many as you want. Now, 
As I mentioned earlier, this is going to work perfectly on tablet and mobile also. They'll just have to tap on it. But of course, they're not going to know that they've got a tap on it unless you tell them. So let's put a little line of text at the top here that tells them they can tap on these images for more info. And we only want to show this line of text when they're on a tablet or mobile phone. So I'm going to add a new row just underneath here. I'm going to put a single column in my row. I want to use a little text module. You can use whatever module you want. I'm just going to keep this very simple with a text module. Let's say tap on the image for more information. As you can see, it's put it right there. I'm going to go into my design, my text right here. I'm just going to pop that in the middle. I'm going to leave it the dark color just exactly how it is. You can style it any way you want if you want to. I'm going to save this. I'm going to move my row up to the top where I want it so it's on the top of everything. Now, while we're in the row itself, I think I might take any padding away top and bottom. So I don't want it quite as deep as that. Take the padding away. We can go into design and spacing. Put a zero in the top. You'll see it move up there. Hit the chain, it'll do the bottom also. That's fantastic. But of course, I only want to see this line of code up there. Or I should say this line of text up there when they're on tablet and mobile. So let's go back into the row itself. You could do this on the module too if you wanted to. We'll go over to advanced and visibility. I'm going to disable it on desktop. And we did this in yesterday's video. You can see it down below there. Once I do that, it'll gray it out, letting you know it's there because we're in the builder, but it's not visible on this view. And if we've done everything correctly now, we should be good to go. We'll save that. We'll save our page changes. We'll exit the visual builder. We'll go on down. There's our images. It's going to take three quarters of a second to roll in. Of course, we can read it. Click on the button. Same with those. As I mentioned earlier, if you've got different amounts of content, you can put different amounts of padding if you want to push these down or put them wherever you want. I'm happy with that, though. Now, let's make sure this is going to work on tablet and mobile. If I hit my F12 key like I did earlier on. Here we go on iPhone 12. There's our image. There's our little bit of writing. It's turned up because we're on a phone. Click on the image. It's going to do its thing. And exactly the same with an iPad. Tap on the image for more info. There we go. Roll down, do our thing, click on the call to action button. And that's a really nice little feature to have on your site. On desktop, of course, it's going to get their attention really quickly. So as they're hovering, things like this happen. It gets people's attention pretty quickly, which is what you want. And then, of course, on tablet and mobile, we've got a little description there saying click on the image. That's going to get their interest going, hopefully. So there we have it. There's a simple image to text hover effect that you can apply on desktop, tablet and mobile devices. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. Don't forget, if you have any questions, drop them down below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you or make a little demo video just like this one. So once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.